Stop taking creatine like this. Seven huge mistakes ruining your results, and I guarantee you are making at least three of them right now without even knowing it. Look, creatine is literally the most researched supplement on the planet. Over 700 peer-reviewed studies prove it works. So why are you still seeing zero results? Because you are sabotaging yourself with mistakes that nobody is talking about. Today, I am exposing every single one of these gains-killing errors, and by the end of this video, you will know exactly how to fix them. But here's the deal. If you want my exclusive 30-day fitness plus creatine combo guide that tells you exactly what to take, when to take it, and how to train for maximum results, comment the word ready right now. I will send it directly to you. Now let us get into mistake number one. Mistake number one, expecting creatine to work like a pre-workout. Here is the cold hard truth that nobody wants to hear. Creatine is not a pre-workout and treating it like one is the fastest way to convince yourself that it does not work. I see this constantly. Someone buys their first tub of creatine, takes a scoop before hitting the gym, and expects to suddenly bench press a small car. When they feel absolutely nothing different during that workout, they assume they got scammed and tossed the tub under their bathroom sink to collect dust for the next three years. This is fundamentally misunderstanding how creatine operates at a cellular level. Unlike caffeine, which directly stimulates your central nervous system within 15 to 45 minutes, creatine works through a completely different mechanism. Creatine must first be absorbed through your intestines, enter your bloodstream, and then gradually accumulate inside your muscle cells where it gets converted into phosphocreatine. This phosphocreatine then serves as a rapid energy reservoir that regenerates adenosine triphosphate, which is your muscle's primary energy currency during high-intensity efforts. This saturation process requires approximately two to four weeks of consistent daily supplementation. Think of it like charging a massive battery. You cannot plug in your phone for 30 seconds and expect 100% charge. Your muscles work the same way. Each daily dose adds a little more to your creatine stores until you reach full saturation, and only then do the performance benefits become noticeable. The research published in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition confirms that consistent daily dosing of 3 to 5 grams leads to full muscle saturation within approximately 21 to 28 days. Once saturated, you can expect around 5 to 15% improvements in high-intensity exercise performance, increased strength output, and enhanced muscle recovery between sets. So here is your action step. Commit to taking creatine every single day for a minimum of four weeks before you even think about evaluating whether it is working. Patience is not optional here. It is the entire strategy. Mistake number two, doing a loading phase when you do not need to. Raise your hand if you have ever read that you absolutely must load creatine by taking 20 grams per day for the first week. Congratulations, you have been fed outdated advice that is more likely to give you violent stomach cramps than any meaningful advantage. Let me explain where this loading phase idea originated and why it is largely unnecessary for most people. Early creatine research did utilize loading protocols to rapidly achieve muscle saturation within five to seven days rather than three to four weeks. Researchers were trying to see results quickly for study purposes. Supplement companies then latched onto this and marketed loading phases as essential because, surprise, it means you burn through your creatine supply faster and have to buy more. Here is what the science actually shows. A landmark study published in the Journal of Applied Physiology compared subjects who loaded with 20 grams daily for six days versus subjects who simply took three grams daily without any loading. Both groups reached identical muscle creatine saturation levels. The only difference was timing. The loading group got there faster, while the consistent low-dose group arrived at the same destination approximately three weeks later. Meanwhile, the loading group reported significantly higher rates of gastrointestinal distress, including bloating, cramping, diarrhea, and nausea. Many people who attempt loading phases end up so uncomfortable that they quit creatine entirely, blaming the supplement itself when the real culprit was unnecessary megadosing. There is genuinely only one scenario where loading makes sense. If you have a competition or event in seven days and you have never taken creatine before, loading can get you saturated faster. For literally everyone else going about their regular training, just take three to five grams daily and let your body accumulate it comfortably over time. You will reach the same endpoint without feeling like your intestines are staging a revolt. 
Skip the loading phase. Your stomach will thank you, your wallet will thank you, and your results will be identical. Mistake number three, wasting money on fancy creatine forms. This one physically pains me because I have watched people spend absurd amounts of money on marketing nonsense when the cheapest option on the shelf is literally the best one. Walk into any supplement store and you will see creatine hydrochloride, buffered creatine, creatine ethyl ester, liquid creatine, creatine magnesium chelate, effervescent creatine, and about 15 other variations, all promising superior absorption, zero bloating, and revolutionary results. These products typically cost two to four times more than plain creatine monohydrate. And here is the uncomfortable truth that these companies hope you never discover. Creatine monohydrate is the single most studied form of creatine in existence. Over 95% of all creatine research has been conducted using monohydrate. Every proven benefit you have ever heard about creatine, increased strength, enhanced power output, improved muscle recovery, potential cognitive benefits, all of that evidence comes from monohydrate studies. Now let us examine these so-called superior alternatives. Creatine ethyl ester was marketed as having better absorption and causing less water retention. A study published in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition found that creatine ethyl ester actually degraded into creatinine, a useless waste product, at significantly higher rates than monohydrate. Participants using creatine ethyl ester had lower muscle creatine levels than those using plain monohydrate. You are literally paying more for worse results. Liquid creatine sounds convenient until you realize that creatine is unstable in liquid form and begins breaking down into creatinine within days of being mixed with water. By the time that bottled liquid creatine reaches your hands, a substantial portion has already converted to a form your body cannot use. Creatine hydrochloride claims superior solubility, meaning it dissolves better in water. While this is technically true, there is no evidence that improved solubility translates to improved absorption or effectiveness. Your stomach contains hydrochloric acid. Creatine monohydrate dissolves just fine in there. The recommendation is simple. Buy micronized creatine monohydrate from a reputable brand that has third-party testing. Look for certifications like Informed Sport, NSF Certified for Sport, or USP Verification. You will spend less money and get a product backed by actual evidence instead of marketing claims. Mistake number four, freaking out about water weight. I need you to hear this clearly because this single mistake causes more people to abandon creatine than probably any other issue. When you start taking creatine and the scale goes up one to three kilograms in the first two weeks, that is not fat. I repeat, that is not fat. That is creatine doing exactly what it is supposed to do. Creatine is an osmotically active substance, which means it draws water molecules with it wherever it goes. When creatine accumulates inside your muscle cells, it pulls water into those cells as well. This intracellular water retention makes your muscles more volumized, more hydrated, and actually more capable of producing force. This is a performance benefit, not a side effect. The key distinction here is between intracellular water retention and subcutaneous water retention. Intracellular means inside the cells, specifically inside your muscle cells. This makes muscles look fuller and more defined. Subcutaneous means under the skin and outside the cells, which creates that puffy, bloated appearance. Creatine causes intracellular retention, not subcutaneous bloating. If you look puffier after starting creatine, the cause is likely dietary, not the creatine itself. Here is where people derail themselves. They see the scale increase, panic about getting fat, and immediately stop taking creatine. Some people actually start crash dieting in response to what is literally just their muscles holding more water. This is completely counterproductive. A far more accurate way to assess your progress is to track how your clothes fit, take progress photos in consistent lighting, measure your waist circumference, and evaluate your performance in the gym. If your waist measurement stays the same, your lifts are going up, and you look more muscular in photos, then you are progressing even if the scale has increased. Also understand that this initial water weight stabilizes after the first few weeks. Your body reaches a new equilibrium, and the scale stops climbing. The water weight you gain is directly proportional to the creatine stored in your muscles, which is finite. You cannot just keep infinitely gaining water weight from creatine. Embrace the scale increase. It literally means the creatine is working and your muscles are saturated. 
That is the goal. Mistake number five, chronically underhydrating. If I could only give you one piece of advice from this entire video, it would be this. If you are taking creatine and not significantly increasing your water intake, you are setting yourself up for headaches, muscle cramps, and zero results. This is the silent killer of creatine effectiveness, and almost everyone is guilty. We already established that creatine draws water into your muscle cells. But here is the part most people do not think through. Where does that water come from? It comes from the rest of your body. If you are not drinking enough water to compensate for this redistribution, you are essentially dehydrating your other tissues to hydrate your muscles. This creates a cascade of problems. Mild dehydration impairs cognitive function, physical performance, and mood regulation. Studies show that as little as 2% dehydration can reduce exercise performance and increase perceived effort during training. When people experience headaches, brain fog, fatigue, or unusually severe muscle cramps after starting creatine, they blame the supplement. In reality, creatine just exposed a pre-existing hydration problem that they were barely managing before. The general recommendation is to add at least 500 milliliters to one liter of additional water daily when supplementing with creatine. However, this is a baseline, and your actual needs depend on your body size, activity level, climate, and sweat rate. A 200-pound construction worker training in Texas heat needs dramatically more water than a 130-pound office worker in an air-conditioned building in Seattle. A practical method to assess your hydration status is to monitor your urine color. You want pale yellow, like light lemonade. If your urine is completely clear, you might actually be overhydrating and flushing out electrolytes. If it looks like apple juice or darker, you are dehydrated and need to drink more. Another tip is to spread your water intake throughout the day rather than chugging large amounts at once. Your body can only absorb so much water per hour. Drinking 32 ounces in one sitting mostly just results in extra bathroom trips rather than improved hydration. When you fix your hydration, those creatine side effects magically disappear because they were never creatine side effects in the first place. They were dehydration symptoms that creatine amplified by increasing your water requirements. Mistake number six, paralysis by analysis on timing. Should you take creatine in the morning, before your workout, after your workout, with carbohydrates, with protein, on an empty stomach, at exactly 7.32 in the evening during a waning crescent moon while facing magnetic north? Stop, just stop. You are massively overcomplicating this and your obsession with perfect timing is probably causing you to miss doses entirely which is infinitely worse than taking it at a suboptimal time. Here is the scientific reality. Creatine timing matters far less than creatine consistency. Once your muscles are fully saturated with creatine, that saturation is maintained as long as you continue taking your daily dose. The exact hour you take it has minimal impact on your long-term results. Now, there is some research suggesting that post-workout creatine intake might offer a slight advantage. A study published in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition found that participants who took creatine immediately after training showed marginally greater improvements in lean mass and strength compared to those who took it before training. The proposed mechanism is that exercise increases blood flow to muscles and may enhance creatine uptake. However, and this is important, the differences were modest. We are talking about small percentage improvements, not transformative differences. If taking creatine post-workout means you sometimes forget on rest days, then you would be better served by taking it at the same time every day regardless of your training schedule. The research also suggests that taking creatine with carbohydrates or protein may enhance uptake due to insulin response. But again, these are marginal optimizations, not requirements. If you prefer taking creatine with plain water first thing in the morning, that works. If you mix it into your post-workout protein shake, that works too. The single most important factor is finding a time that you can adhere to consistently every single day, including rest days. Tie it to an existing habit. Put it next to your toothbrush, your coffee maker, or your vitamins. Set a daily phone reminder. Do whatever you need to do to make it automatic and unmissable. One missed dose matters more than a hundred perfectly timed doses that you took at suboptimal hours. Pick a time, any time, and take your creatine at that time every single day without fail. Mistake number seven, thinking creatine is only for young gym brothers. 
If you are over the age of 30 and you have dismissed creatine as something only for young guys trying to get swole, you are leaving significant health benefits on the table. Modern research is revealing that creatine may actually be more beneficial for older adults than for younger ones. As we age, we naturally lose muscle mass and strength through a process called sarcopenia. This begins around age 30 and accelerates after age 50. We also experience a decline in creatine synthesis, meaning our bodies produce less creatine internally as we get older. Simultaneously, many older adults eat less meat, which is the primary dietary source of creatine. The combination means older populations are often functionally creatine deficient. Research published in Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise found that creatine supplementation combined with resistance training was significantly more effective at increasing lean muscle mass, strength, and functional performance in older adults compared to resistance training alone. This has massive implications for quality of life, fall prevention, and maintaining independence as we age. But the benefits extend beyond muscle. Creatine plays a role in brain energy metabolism. Your brain is extraordinarily metabolically demanding, consuming about 20% of your daily energy despite being only 2% of your body weight. Emerging research suggests that creatine supplementation may support cognitive function, particularly in situations of sleep deprivation, mental fatigue, or age-related cognitive decline. A study in experimental gerontology demonstrated that creatine supplementation improved cognitive performance and mood in elderly participants. Another study found that vegetarians, who consume virtually no dietary creatine, showed significant improvements in working memory and intelligence scores after supplementing with creatine. Women specifically may benefit from creatine during and after menopause, as declining estrogen levels accelerate muscle loss and bone density reduction. Creatine can help preserve muscle mass and potentially support bone health during this transition. Creatine is not just a bodybuilding supplement, it is increasingly being recognized as a longevity supplement that supports muscle health, brain function, and overall cellular energy production. If you are over 30, you probably have more to gain from creatine than the 22-year-old college athlete. Stop gatekeeping yourself from a supplement that could genuinely improve your quality of life. And there you have it. Seven massive mistakes that are silently sabotaging your creatine results. Let me quickly summarize what we covered. Mistake number one was expecting creatine to work like a pre-workout when it actually requires weeks of consistent use to saturate your muscles. Mistake number two was suffering through unnecessary loading phases when three to five grams daily achieves identical results without the gastrointestinal distress. Mistake number three was wasting money on fancy creatine forms when plain monohydrate is the most proven and cost-effective option. Mistake number four was panicking about water weight when that scale increase is actually evidence that creatine is working correctly. Mistake number five was underhydrating, which causes symptoms that people incorrectly blame on creatine itself. Mistake number six was overcomplicating timing when consistency matters infinitely more than perfection. And mistake number seven was assuming creatine is only for young bodybuilders when research shows it may be even more beneficial for older adults. Fix these mistakes and creatine transforms from a confusing supplement that never seems to work into one of the most reliable, affordable, and evidence-backed tools in your entire fitness arsenal. Now I want to hear from you. Which of these mistakes have you been making? Be honest in the comments below because I guarantee someone else is making the exact same error and needs to see they are not alone. And do not forget, if you want my exclusive 30-day fitness plus creatine combo guide with the exact dosing protocol, training recommendations, and nutrition strategies to maximize your results. Comment the word ready right now and I will send it directly to you. If this video helped you understand creatine better, smash that like button because it tells the algorithm to show this to more people who are also making these mistakes. Subscribe if you want more no-nonsense fitness content that actually helps you get results instead of just selling you supplements. I will see you in the next video. Stay consistent, stay hydrated, and stop overcomplicating this.